Hi guys, welcome to Sosin Classes. This is Hima Hegde presenting before you the current and contemporary affairs in anthropology. The first topic for the day is anthropology of sports. Speaking of the anthropology of sports, anthropologists understand sports as a cultural performance. The term performance can describe a plethora of actions including any that are artful, active or competitive and sometimes some combination of all of these. Anthropologist Ajit Jaiswal describes the anthropology of sports as the study of human growth and development. If one conceives of sports as a sort of performance, one also sees that each performance is unique to the performer. Each athlete, even the most impressive and seemingly unique, is a part of a larger performance. Consider your favorite sport or athletic competition. How long has it been in existence? Does it have roots in ancient times? Does it have or uh, often athletes and sports personalities from Roman gladiators to most Engl recent English footballers, American basketball players and Olympic athletes are considered singularly talented at their respective sports. However, without the broader cultural context that has cultivated gymnastics, tennis, soccer and basketball, these talents would have no stage on which to perform. Anthropologists who study sports do so within a larger context of sports and society. Interests of the anthropologists researching sports might include archaeological research related to sports tools, cultural anthropological research pertaining to how exactly to do humans interact with sports or even biological or physical anthropological research on biological maturation or physical growth. Now sports artifacts such as the weapons of gladiators and tools used in the old and recent Olympic sports have offered significant contributions to the anthropology of material art. Picture your favorite sport. It likely involves a specific tool that is a representation of that sport. Notable examples of such tools and artifacts include the lacrosse sticks, hammers from the oldest Olympic hammer throw competitions and the modern day American football uniform which is designed for safety and decorated to represent affiliation, professionalism and individual athletes. Sports have also offered theatrical performances since ancient times. Picture, of the picture the gladiator of ancient Rome entertaining the wealthy who could afford the best seats or wealthy English footballers entertaining those who are less likely wealthy. The status reversal of sports entertainers and audience in the modern day sports rep re uh, represents the dichotomous nature of social status and is just one of many examples of cultural change throughout the time. The second topic for the day is tribes of Northeast India. Northeast India is well known for its distinct culture and traditional lifestyle. It is a land inhabited by more than 200 fascinating tribes. Each tribal group of Northeast India has its own unique tribal culture and ethnic diversities of tribal world in India. It is no wonder the region has ever since captured the imaginations of anthropologists from all over the world. The northeastern part of India shares its boundary with China, Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar and Bangladesh. It comprises of eight states that is Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Tripura, Mizoram, Meghalaya, Assam, Nagaland and Manipur share their boundary with Myanmar. So Meghalaya and Tripura share it with Bangladesh whereas Assam shares its boundary with Bhutan. Sikkim shares the boundary with China, Nepal and Bhutan. Now the closeness of the region so many international borders have left the region much explored due to its sensitivity. 
the entire area of northeast india is full of lush green valleys the land with its natural beauty and cultural heritage has always topped the list of an ideal destination for the travelers worldwide the indian government has also started taking keen interest in developing the standard of tourism among these tribal occupied states different ethnic groups and tribal groups inhabit the region of northeast india they all have their own culture and tribal tradition and all speak their own tribal languages this has made northeast india one of the most culturally diverse regions in the world the cuisines and attires also vary among the tribals each tribal community has their unique way of living tribal people mostly live and earn through the hills and forest areas speaking of the origin of the tribes northeast indian tribes have originated from the ethnic groups of tibeto burmese proto australians and some of the indo mongoloids the trend can be seen in the looks traditions that are visibly followed by these communities they also show a cultural bridging with the neighboring countries and india has still provided them with a safe haven compared to the living compared to living in neighboring communist nations of china and burma now if we were to speak of different kinds of the northeast indian tribes they are all scattered arunachal pradesh has around 20 25 types nagaland around 16 some of the examples of the prominent tribes would be garo khasi jaintia adi angami bhutia kuki rengma bodo and duri they are scattered throughout the region christianism is followed among many of the tribes and some follow buddhism the rest still have their indigenous beliefs and practice animism let us now talk about kinship and anthropology anthropology reveals incredible cross cultural and historical diversity on kinship and relatedness why do anthropologists study kinship early anthropologists assumed kinship was of paramount importance there were several reasons for this assumption firstly kinship studies in anthropology were based on the assumption that all societies recognize the same basic genealogical relationships henry morgan's 1870 book systems of consanguinity and affinity of the human family not only assumed this biology but assumed societies could be ranked from savagery to civilization based on their kinship understandings secondly anthropologists portrayed kinship as a crucial organizing factor for societies which seemed to be stateless or lacked formal government or the governance finally collecting kinship terms and attempting to systemize them seem to be a way quickly categorize a way to quickly categorize and develop a typology of various societies the concentration of anthropology on kinship became so extreme that in the early 1950s in the heyday of british structural functionalism functionalism kinship studies were in fact so dominant that outsiders spoke ironically of anthropology as kinshipology speaking of kinship and anthropology after a long period in which kinship studies dominated anthropology a subsequent generation of anthropologists decided to answer to is kinship important was not so much anthropologists had established the cultural recognition of kinship rather than its biological basis anthropological attention began to shift more towards the issues of economics and other concerns although anthropologists importantly indicated that kinship had hardly disappeared from the modern politics they shunned the previous ideas that kinship was a determining force or a key to unlock all the societies in part this was because as with language the presence or absence of kinship terms did not determine thought and behavior 
Another factor in the reanalysis of the importance of kinship was the realization that the hunter gatherers the bands which were always depicted as completely kin based were actually a mix of friends and kin as anthropologist helga describes in january 2018 blog post friends among the kua adults belonging to a wider circle of valued comp- companions consisting of both relatives and friends is of paramount importance in the present day one huge change has been the changing landscape of ideas about gender and the idea of being transgender another change to classic kinship ideas is the recognition of how much pain and inequality is part of kinship and family so that is it for today hope you found it informative thank you